What's up guys, Alberto Big Boost here. Today I'm at my friend Noel's house and I'm gonna be working on a 2014 BMW 335i to, uh, single turbo N55 engine. The reason why I'm here is because this car has a famous oil leak on the oil filter housing. I'm gonna show you, it's one of these cars, it's the same on a BMW E90, E92 and F30 chassis, they're all the same. Same engine that Adam has as well, except he has an N54. In this case, the N55 is the same, pretty much the same engine as the N54, except instead of being twin turbo, it has a twin power turbo, which means it's a twin scroll single turbo setup. Over here, we have the oil filter housing. And if I zoom in, you guys can see there's a little bit of oil on the sides. And it's leaking pretty badly that you can see there's a few oil spots on the driveway over here. Oh, well, not driveway, inside the garage. I'm inside the garage today. I'm not in the driveway. <laughs> so today, I'm gonna show you guys how to not do that. That is loud. You got some racing neighbors over here. I do. Guys, I'm gonna show you how to fix the common problem of the BMW 335 oil leak through the oil filter housing and oil cooler if equipped in this case. And this engine is gonna be a BMW N55 single turbo. It's the same thing on an N54. One thing that I found out on this car is that it doesn't have a drain fitting for the radiator. It says just to remove one of the lower radiator hoses, which I'm gonna do. That way I can get the coolant level below the upper hose. That way when I remove the oil filter housing, it doesn't spill coolant everywhere. Here's the oil filter housing and it has the upper radiator hose that attaches to it. If I remove this hose right now, it's gonna spill coolant everywhere. To do a clean job, I wanna lower the coolant level below this mark. That way when I remove this housing, it doesn't spill coolant all over the place. To do that, I'm gonna have to jack up the car from the side a little bit, then remove the under panel. That way I can access the lower radiator hose. Now we're gonna go underneath the car and we're gonna be looking for this hose right here. Here we go. It has a little clip. So I can remove this clip and then drain the coolant through this. After you remove the hose, you let air come in through the reservoir over here and you'll see that the water will keep going more and more. If I close this, you'll see that the flow stops. So you wanna open this and you can control the stream coming out. Just get like almost a whole pan full of this and it should be enough. Now I'm gonna remove the big cover on top of the engine and just literally clips in place. It has this like rubber grommet and it has this little ball thingy so I just snap in place. Uh, I'll put this somewhere over there. So you see all the mess on your engine that we're just hiding everything on uh, that pretty cover, huh? And yeah. I was like, what is this? Yep. <laughs> Absolutely. Welcome to technology on cars. Quick running around on the N55 engine. This is a direct port injection engine. That's why you got these lines that look just like diesel lines because it does have high pressure injectors. It doesn't have your regular injectors on this side. It has high pressure injection just like diesel but using gasoline. Um, so that way, when you're gonna replace the valve cover gasket on this engine, it's a little bit of a task. In this case, we're not gonna be touching that and we're gonna be on this side. I have to undo the intake manifold because one of the bolts that holds the oil filter housing is right down there and the intake manifold is in the way. We can shine some light in there. There's a bolt like right there, we can't really see it. You'll see it once I take the intake off. To get the intake off, I either gotta disconnect all the sensors, undo the bolts, I gotta disconnect the charge pipe down here by the throttle body. First I'm gonna remove this 
clamp right here. Pretty easy. Then for this hose, you squeeze and wiggle it and it should come off. Wait, gotta squeeze a little harder. Ow, there you go. Then this has this little clip right here, you just press in. It's so cold, my fingers hurt from doing everything. There we go. Now, take this clips off. It's another one. There's a fourth, but it's not there. It's missing. Now you're missing a clamp thing. It doesn't surprise me. Take it out of the way. You can leave the filter here if you want. It's okay. What the hell? <laughs> now I'm, you have all these wires in there. This is a map sensor wire. You can move it out of the way. Unclip it from here. Move it to the front. Then I need to get this cable out of the way. So it has this little clip right here. I'm gonna hold that. There we go. All right, now I can move that out of the way once I remove the intake manifold. Then over here, we gotta remove this clip for the charge pipe or another coal pipe. Now it just pulls up like this. Then you push down on it. It comes right off. All right, now comes the fun part. I have to remove the bolts that hold the intake manifold in place. It's gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Seven of these, they're gonna be seven sixteenths um, head size. I'm gonna start with the back one all the way down there. I don't know if you can even see it. It's pretty difficult. Uh, I can't even see it myself from this angle. I just have to feel out for it. There we go. Remove the rest by hand. Oh, this hurts. What is my little hand? One down. Not gonna use the extension for the rest of them. This one's bolt. The hard part is also to get them off without dropping the bolt down because it'll be pita to get it out, uh, to get it back. So make sure you don't drop these. At this point, I should be able to pull the intake manifold all the way a little bit. Gotta fight with the charge pipe over here. Try to get it out of the way. So it allows me to move this. I don't have to remove the intake manifold all the way out, as you can see here. Now I have access to get to this bolt all the way over there. You can see it right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now I can get that bolt. That's the whole reason you have to take the intake manifold off. Apparently at the dealership, they removed the entire thing for no reason. Next step is to remove this upper radiator hose. One little pick. This handy dandy little pick right here. And you go on this from the other side, obviously. We always have to make it from the hard side. I'll just take it off from here then. And the clip had to drop. <laughs> it would drop. <laughs> oh. Wiggle this.
and I was able to take the hose without any coolant spill on so it. First step I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take off the oil cooler part of the housing. There's three Torx bolts, there's this one, this one, and then one in the middle. To get to the one in the middle, I'm gonna have to remove the lines first, which is gonna be a Torx T30 bolt here. Do you have like a little plastic cup? Yeah. Before removing this, try to get a plastic cup and put it underneath in case it does spill oil. You don't have oil everywhere. And see, it contained that little bit, but that little bit creates a mess. That little bit of oil there. Now for the bolts, we're gonna use a uh, E12 Torx bit. I'm gonna start by that bottom one. Here's a dirty bolt. It's gonna now the two side ones. I really wish I had my little impact tool here now. On the left. It'll speed things up. And then one more over here. Perfect. Now I'm gonna use a little flathead screwdriver to pry both pieces apart. Comes out effortless. And there's a little bit more oil there. Yep. <laughs> and here's one of the little gaskets which you need the pick to be able to get to this. You're gonna use a little pick and then let's see where I can like probably just put this around here somewhere and take it off. Oh, almost, almost. There we go. Yeah, this gasket is like not wow. rubber at all, it's like plastic now. Check out the new gasket, it's like all nice and rubbery. It goes in very easily, well, this way. Look at that, perfect. Of course, you gotta clean the parts with a little bit of brake cleaner. Forgot to show that on the video, I'm sorry guys, but luckily you have the other part over here. Oh my God, look at the underneath of it. Holy crap. That was leaking so much. How do we even like clean this? I have no idea. Alright, to remove the rest of the housing now, there's this little bolt right here that uh, in this hose is in the way. So to get to this hose, first I have to remove this out of the way, which right here on the left, you're gonna have uh, this long bolt that holds these hoses to this bracket. Take that off so you can move this out of the way. Mm. This thing has to be out of the way. That way you can get these two bolts for this hose. There's, I thought there was three. There's only two on the top. And then you just wiggle it out. And this hose has an O-ring. So it just plugs back in afterwards. Now that I have this hose out of the way, I can go ahead and remove this bolt, which is uh, E10. This one right here is uh, E10. Now I can access it. I'm gonna remove that one first because it's the most uncomfortable bolt. You can already see the oil, even through the threads of the bolt. Now 
gonna go ahead and take the really uncomfortable bolt out first to get out of the way. I figure once I take it off, how am I gonna like actually take it off? <laughs> I just it comes right off. Just gotta use like two fingers for this. And it's out. You can already see the housing is starting to move out of the way. Let's see what we got. So we got coolant passage and we got oil passage. I saw a little bit of oil spots, uh, a few oil spots on the oil. That means this was already mixing. So you have oil pressure seeping into the coolant passage. And then it almost looks like it has a blown head gasket, but that is not the case. Problem is I gotta replace this gasket, so it doesn't do that anymore. Now to remove this gasket, same thing as before, use the pick and go right underneath it and it comes right off. It's all clean. Don't have to remove all the oil from it because it's still inside the engine, but at least clean the surroundings. That way you have a nice job. As you can see, I also clean over here. So the whole part on the block where it goes in, there's no more oil all over the place. Time for a new gasket. I love how this thing just fits so nicely in there. Look at that. Perfect. And that's it. Make sure there's nothing. There are no contaminants that could go inside your engine. Everything has to be clean. And looks like we're good, good right here. Just put this right over here. Now I gotta make sure I clean the bolts first. Never put bolts dirty back in the car. Yo, I always like to clean this and then put them back in the car. This is how you want your bolts to look once you put them back in the car. This is like the exact same bolt all cleaned up. I'm gonna start with this really uncomfortable one as a guide right here. Then I'm gonna use the top one also as another guide. That way, the third one that's like really difficult to put in goes right in easy without having to fire and then the bolt falling or something. Oh, this one's gonna be hard. Oh, wait. I know something seemed a little off. There you go. This harness just wants to get in the way. <laughs> Alright, see? Make that look easy. Make that look easy, it's all about the big boost fingers. Ha! <laughs> I see what you did there. Can't really see this harness, it's always in the way of everything. See the bolt right about there. I'm gonna tie all this snug. That way I make sure the filter housing sits properly. And then after I have all three bolts snug, then I'll go ahead and tie it. Just gonna take a minute. All right, the bolt is snug. Now I'm gonna go ahead and tie it. And do the same with the other two. Well, how much pressure do you think you're putting in? Um, it's like a new two meters in this one, so like 18, 20 two meters. Now I got to put this little hose thingy back here in place. I had a bit of an issue. This part right here had a stretched out O-ring. 
Also the water neck was a little cracked. I managed to like work with it. Took us a little bit, but I got it done. Now it's time to put this housing back in place. What the hell is that? <laughs> Now I go under here. Same thing with the other one. Tighten all the bolts till they're snug and then tighten them. That way you make sure that your piece um, sits properly. I can go ahead and install the oil cooler lines. They go right on the bottom here. And this bolt just goes right over here and pulls them in. I'm gonna go ahead and put everything else together and then look for that clip at the end. So let's go ahead and line up the intake manifold. Yeah, there you go, let's put it there like that. Then there's this little, yeah, this goes in this clip right here. Uh, now it's gonna start putting the bolts in. There's two bolts. So the first two are bolts all the other ones are studs. Make sure you put them all by hand first. Make sure you start the threads. And then very careful to not drop anything. That's like the worst part. So we're gonna make sure to line up the intake hose. So hard to get your hand in there. And go get that in there and then lower that clip. Bam, that's secured. I didn't start that one by hand, so I wasn't doing anything this whole time. <laughs> ah. Blooper. Last one, I have to use a short extension. 
number one, number one. Wait, actually, no extension. Sorry. <laughs> Get that all the way down there. Uh, if I can find it. I think I found it. I'm not sure. Yeah, there we go. All right, we're done. We're done on the intake part. Now, is to put the air filter back in place. But before I do that, I gotta find that radiator hose clip. It's all the way down there. I have everything else in place. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put the air filter box back together. There we go, that's one part. Then now put the air filter in. There we go. Now the tube. I put this side on first, get in there. That's a good a better intake. Align this. Now I put the clips in place. There's four, this one only has three. Something Mask special. plug, click this back in there. Make sure this is in there. And now the last thing is to tighten the Get in there. There we go. Now I put on the intake clamp. That's gonna be really hard to edit now. <laughs> what? All right, we're done. Now, what I gotta do is uh, put the coolant back in the, in the system and run the pump. Uh, I'll show you guys how to do that in a uh, next. Look, guys, he's potting my car. This is the equipment that you find in Noel's house. Hey, I don't know so what my what funnel I is. Deal with. I know I have a funnel somewhere. All right, guys, to bleed the pump on this BMW, you're gonna put the car on the on position without starting it. And then you're gonna press the gas pedal for 10 seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This should start the water pump to start um, running, and it will like prime the. Uh, it will it will bleed the cooling system. Now we go over here, and it should be able to start here in the pump, starting to do some work. It's starting to move water now. I forgot one little step that was very important. You need to put the car with the heater all the way hot. If not, it's not gonna do it. So I go in back inside, put the heater all the way hot on both sides, and then it'll start, and then press the pedal, and it'll do the 10 second thing. Now you hear all the funny noises that this car makes. You'll notice that the pump will go from like low and start increasing the speed that it runs the water and it gets louder and louder over time. Noel, why did you feed this car? I, I, I filled it up with a lot of air. Sorry. 
Right, when I face the camera on it, it doesn't do it. Oh, wait, there's a little bit on it. <laughs> After this, I'm going to run the car without the engine cover. I'm gonna sure I'm gonna check for coolant leaks or oil leaks or any kind. Then after it heats up and it passes everything, then I'll put the cover back on, which is there somewhere behind Noel, all the way over there, and then we're done here. All right, we're done here. Now I'm telling Noel to go ahead and start the car, and we're gonna check for leaks. Yeah. Yeah. anything here I'm gonna go ahead and shine some light in there and see if I find anything everything looks good so far let's let it warm up and we'll check again Oh my God, guys, well, we're over here waiting for the car to warm up, which it finally did. The temperature dropped to 34 degrees down here. I'm freezing. Like, no wonder the car took forever to warm up. And then, to make it all worse, I have to wash my hands. <laughs> and this freezing hose right here, which hurt really, really bad. Do not do that at home. I don't recommend it. Well, everything checks out perfect. I put the cover back in place. There's no oil leaks. There's no coolant leaks. Temperatures are holding great. Everything is perfect here, so we're done with this. All right, the important parts over here. I just saved Noel so much money on this, um, and now you can too. After showing you guys this video, you can do the oil filter housing yourself and save a lot of money. So I'm glad I'm able to teach you guys something new today and also save some money on your wallet if you own one of these or you're planning to get one of these. Now you can do that yourself. Also, I already have planned after I come back from vacation, I'm supposed to do a fuel regulator on one of these as well, which is replacing the whole fuel pump assembly. And I also have to do a valve cover gasket replacement. So I'll show you guys how to do that as well. It is now 11.45 at night and it's 34 degrees, so I think it's time that I start heading home because I am freezing over here. And I have no AC or heater on the BMW, so I'm gonna be going probably 70 miles per hour at 34 degree temperatures with oh, no heaters. Down. And that sucks, it's probably gonna hurt like hell, so hopefully I can make it home without dying or something. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thank you guys for watching the video. Please smash the like button and subscribe for more awesome videos like these.